In this episode, we're taking you through a quick exercise to help you really uncover whether 2023 has been a successful year. Spoiler alert, you've probably achieved more than you think. You're listening to JFGI with the two Lauras. This is the weekly podcast where the two of us chat about all things related to building a business as a freelancer. We're on a mission to help more social media freelancers to build profitable businesses that fund their lifestyle and work around their families. And we share tips, advice and inspiration about business, marketing and social media. And occasionally we'll have the odd rant too. In today's episode, we're taking you through a quick exercise to reflect on your 2023 successes. We all have different views on success and most of us end the year thinking we failed to achieve much, which isn't usually true at all. So we're going to take you through a quick exercise to prove that you actually have probably achieved far more than you think. After the show, you'll probably have more questions about this. So come and chat with us in our free Facebook group, The Social Media Managers Hub. To join us, go to thesocialmediamanagershub.com or search for The Social Media Managers Hub on Facebook. Pop your email address in and we'll let you in so we can continue that conversation. We'd also love to know where you're listening. So take a quick selfie or maybe grab a screenshot and pop it over into your stories and you can tag us at the two Lauras. Okay, so let's dive in then to this exercise so that we can identify whether or not 2023 has actually been a good year. I would just preface this with a spoiler that Laura has already started with. It probably has been a really good year and you probably just don't even realise. So I think sometimes people can get like think if they're having a, especially if they're having a shit week. Yeah. Oh, I'm having a shit year. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've Maybe done that's nothing just my teenager. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We'll get so a bit I think grunty. this is a good, a good exercise because actually when we've sat down, not like we, we've actually achieved more than I would have remembered if I'd have not kind of done that. 100%, 100%. Okay, so the first thing then is to really define what would have made this year a success for you because there's no good getting to the end of the year and just going, oh, well, this was a shit year when you haven't actually decided, well, what would have made it a good year? So that's the first thing. What is your definition of success for the year? Should we talk about what that would mean for us? Yeah, and I think it's worth saying that you should always review your definition of success mm. because it will change as you change and your business changes and your business grows or, you know, adapts. And like if I think back to when I first started and I had three young children, none of them in full-time education, it was my success would have been Making it to the end of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Today. Yeah, but it would have been along those lines. It would have been about having carved out some time for myself to be able to work on my business. It probably wouldn't have been monetary because I was like earning nothing, but it would have been more about me of having found, you know, just maybe set up to have been able to find an hour every day on an evening or what have you to do something or it may be the fact that I've grown my social account by a, a few hundred people. You know, that would have been early on. And then it was, a, and then later, I remember there was that one year where to, to me, success would that I've been paid to pay for a family holiday. Because up until that point, it was always that I felt like I didn't really contribute to those mm. things. Like, yeah. like it, it wasn't part, like what I earned was like a bit of a token gesture to the family account, I guess. Whereas I wanted to go, you know what, I'm going to pay for a whole family holiday and to go balls deep, so to speak. I went, I'm going to pay for Lapland. I regretted it as soon as I said it out loud and realised <laughs> the cost of it. But Yeah, but you did it. I bloody did it, but I'll never have a year like that again because it was intense. But anyway, but that was, so at that point, what I want, that was what, to me, defined that success for that year. Yeah, And it's changed for us, obviously, as we've worked together and it's taking into account your personal lives and what's happening in your personal lives, along with those kind of business, more kind of traditional business success that you might look for. Yeah. So my point is, like, review it. Like, success changes all the time. And sometimes life throws us curveballs where we have to completely redefine what our success is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, so that's the first thing then define what your definition of success is to you I'll put my teeth in what is success to us Laura I think it's probably changed throughout the year but I think at the moment what I would class as as success is us having everything in place for you to have Christmas off for me to have the time with William in hospital 
and for us to not have to worry about those sorts of things. I think in our business, that would be success. Um, for me personally, it's very similar. It's like being able to know that I can do those things. Like yesterday, I had to go to the hospital. And there was no worry about that. That's success to me. Just, yeah, having a business that we enjoy working in, not having annoying clients who ask us annoying things all the time. All those things, I think, are success to us. Yeah. And obviously having amazing podcast listeners who leave us lovely testimonials and reviews. So make sure you go and hit that review button and leave us a review on our podcast and then we'll feel like we're successful. <laughs> that was the shitty segue I think I've <laughs> ever, ever had. Yeah, I have done some bad ones, but that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's, well, it's the same as you. To be able to do what I need to do to be, to give my kids what they need and want and that just might be that I'm here <laughs> not, yeah. I'm not talking about them getting gadgets and things it's about being here being able to show up so it's that kind of thing yeah With, and, but being able to do that without worry without yes. kind of yeah. thinking I if I do this something else will I'll have to sacrifice something else yeah so, and have that worry and that, that to me is and that to be fair has always run through everything that I do because the reason I went self-employed in the first place was because I had been made redundant and I couldn't find an employed job that would have been fulfilling for me. But more importantly, it wouldn't have worked around the family. And that was my motivation to kind of start my kind of freelance self-employment journey. Yeah. So that has run through. And I think as my family's changed, it's the same. I think you can look back and say to yourself, okay, yeah, I didn't plan that to be my success at the time. That wasn't what I was working yeah. to. But actually now looking back, like what you've just said there has just prompted something in my mind. Like when William has his operation, it's December, it's very expensive and we've got to stay in central London and I'm going to stay in a hotel. And so that's going to be really expensive. But so success to me is that I know I don't have to worry. I know that I can afford that. And I haven't planned throughout the year for that. But I, you know, everything that I've done has kind of worked towards that without me really realizing. So that is success. Yeah, and for me, and I'm I won't go into way too much detail, but to me, health wise, 2022 has been an interesting year. In 2024, I'll be able to fund some surgery, and quite frankly, if I hadn't been able to do that, there is nothing. There is no provision on the NHS, so I'd have had to have just sucked it up. And yeah, and and the fact that I don't have to suffer, well, mm. fingers crossed, is I'm that outweighs other benchmarks that people might consider success um because it is obviously all personal but and that obviously all of this is something that's only happened since you know the back end of the summer so what I just said at the end start of 2023 of what I thought a successful year would look like would not have included having to be able to have enough money to pay for these horrifically expensive yeah. operations and so yeah it changes kind of throughout the year yeah definitely Okay, so once you've done that, I think you need to kind of look at it from a business standpoint. And there's going to be things that you're going to want to look at in your business to see whether your business is successful. And again, like the benchmarks will depend on you, but we're going to give you the, the list of things that you're going to look at. And then the like numbers, if you like, will be very much dependent on you. Do you want to run through the list? Okay, so number one is money in the bank. And what we mean by that is not just what your balance is. Because, you know, listening to this just before Christmas, <laughs> you may have paid yourself a bonus. Yeah. Which you can do, by the way. Which also is classed as success. <laughs> well, yeah. So it's not just about the balance in your bank account, albeit it is worth saying that the more successful your business is, that bigger that balance should always be. So you have that contingency. But let's not go on a... Actually, on that note, should we talk about like what we call your zero? We've talked about this on a podcast before, but it was a long, long time ago. And so Laura and I have this thing that is the zero in our bank balance isn't actually zero. There's a like a number that we won't let our bank balance go below. And if it did go below that, we would consider ourselves to be overdrawn because we'd be overdrawn to us ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And most freelancers and most people probably on the planet would think of their minimum that they should have in their bank account would be zero. But if you've got a zero in your bank account, then what happens when a bill comes in, you go into your overdraft, or if you don't have an overdraft, that bill doesn't get paid. And maybe you lose access to the things that you've paid for, or that you've subscribed for, because you don't have the money in there. And then maybe, I don't know, 
debt collectors come after you and all of that sort of stuff. So we would never, ever go below a zero. And I think it's just common sense, isn't it? That if something was to change in your business, say something happened tomorrow and you lost all of your clients or a large chunk of your income, you should always have, it's like they used to say when I was employed, people would always used to say you should have savings to, that is the equivalent of three months or is it six months salary? It's that kind of same thing, really, that that you should have the money in your bank that should you lose all your clients tomorrow, you can still maintain the you know, paying. Like for us, we used to have a zero, which obviously wasn't a zero. But then when we employed Carrie, we made sure that our zero was higher because we always wanted to make sure that there was always money in the bank to pay yeah. Carrie. And like, so we'll take about- into account like all of our subscriptions and things like that for tools that we yeah. have to run our business. They will go on like and be added on so that that zero will never go below what it needs to pay for those as well. It's, def- it's a good exercise to do to see how much money you need to have in that bank. Yeah, calculate your, especially as we're at the end of the year, calculate how much you've spent this year on things, tools, people, freelancers maybe you use, anything you outsource. Total it all up, divide it by 12. So you've got a monthly amount. Think, right, well, I always want to have three months worth. So you've got a bit of buffer should you need to, you lose clients and you need to find more clients. That should be your zero and probably a little bit extra as well. So you've got money to pay, maybe go to a conference you suddenly want to go to. That's your new zero. And that will be different for all of us. Like it could just be a hundred pounds for some people, but it could be thousands for other people. It will all depend obviously on your business. Anyway, consider that a bonus because that wasn't part of today's plan. (laughs) That wasn't on the notes. (laughs) Money in your bank. What money has come into your bank this year? Because we can all, especially if we're having, like we said right at the start, if you're having a bit of a crap time, maybe you have lost some clients or maybe you're feeling like it's a bit meh at the moment. Look at the whole year. Like how much money has come into your bank? Because sometimes when we add it up, on it, when we look at it on a weekly basis, you can be quite disheartened. But actually, if you look at the whole year, you know, hopefully that number will be more appealing. <laughs> and especially if you're in a profit, don't just think of the income. Think of what you've gone, you know, so if you've had 50,000 in and 20,000 out, that's 30,000 pound profit. And that's not to be sniffed at. Lots of businesses in the first year don't even make a profit. So it's the mm. first three years, I think is actually what they say. They don't make a profit in the first three years. So yeah, just do that kind of number exercise from a financial perspective. And hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised as to how much you've bought into the business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next would be the number of leads you've had. Yeah. We should all be tracking this because a lead is a lead forever. (laughs) A lead is not just for Christmas, it's for life. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, we've talked about this a lot before, but, you know, if you've had a lead come in in January and nothing came of it, what are you doing about it now? Mm. So you should be keeping track of your leads anyway. It shouldn't just be, oh, they never replied to that email, so sod it, that's done. Mm. Um, So you may, and you should have systems in place to track those. Yeah, definitely. And if you've got the access to the social media managers toolkit, you will have a training in there to help you to um, track your prospects. If you don't have the social media managers toolkit, you can grab that at the social media manager. No, that's not the right link. You can grab that at the two lawyers.com forward slash toolkit. And we'll also put that link in the show notes. Yeah. So have a look at that because the, t- you know, if you've had 50 leads come in this year, then that is not to be sniffed at, you know, mm. obviously if you've not converted any of them, then there's work to do. So come and chat to us about that. But if you're attracting people into your business, then that's that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the next thing you want to look at is your audience. Now, we are not here to sit there and say, this year, you know, you should have grown by like 100,000. Oh, God. <laughs> you should have a following of uh, 75,000 to be considered an expert. Like, all that shit. No. That's not us. No. But it would, let's face it, it would be nice to see growth. But we're not mm. just talking about what your Instagram followers are. We're talking about across the board. How many followers, yes, have you got on all of the platforms combined? How many email um, subscribers have you had? You know, if you've listened to a lot of our podcasts, we harp on about this a lot. Social media managers may be good at social, but they still need to have an email list. And look at those numbers. Look at where you were at the start of the year. Look at where you are now. And keep a record of that because that'll be useful come this time next year as well. So you can then look back again and see maybe did you grow quicker next year compared to this year or did you grow quicker this year compared? And then why? And try to figure it out and look. So that's from a data geek perspective. Yeah, 
Definitely. I think another thing you need to look at is like, what have you learned this year? Like whether it's that you've done a course or whether it's that you've just listened to a podcast and got a really good nugget where you've had like an aha moment, like guaranteed you would have learned stuff this year that has been impactful on you or your business. And I think we kind of sometimes forget that that's happened because it's just stuff that's in our brain. It's not something you can measure. It's not something that Laura, the data geek can put a number on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what, like even you and I have learned stuff this year, haven't we? We've learned so many things. And I think we yeah. forget sometimes to look at those. So definitely add that to your list as well. And I think it's worth saying that if this year you have taken on quite a large learning project, so maybe you've done a program, like we've got lots of people at the moment going through the Ads Manager Academy, which is in the toolkit. When you're learning, you are taking up time. We have a limited amount of time. All of us have the same amount of time. But when we take up, say, five hours a week learning something, then that is time that we are taking away from essentially making money. So if you, in theory, look back on the year and you could go, you know what? Yeah, maybe I haven't made as much money as I wanted or maybe I haven't generated enough leads. But actually this year I have trained myself to be a meta ads manager or I have upped my expertise on xyz that time that should be celebrated that is a success because because and that may be a res- may answer some other questions that you have in your business because you've been so focused on learning and if you were to put all this in grass so the data geek of me is has kicked in again if you were to try to look visualize that you would see yes you may have growth in one but that may result in a plateau or even a decline in something else because we can't Everything can't be going up all the time, can it? No. And I think also we forget, like, we've put all of that time into learning and you might have, like, lost out, as so to speak, in other ways. But that learning is with you for life. So yeah. th- that's it's just going to continue to increase, like, what you do with it over time. And it increases your value. So you should, yeah. in theory, then earn, be earning more on the back of what you've just learned. Yeah, totally. Totally. So definitely look at that. Um, We talked about leads a minute ago, but what about like connections you've made? Because not all of your connections will be leads. Some of them might just be that you've met somebody great who's helped you in your business, or I don't know, maybe you've been invited on a podcast, all of those sorts of things. Those sort of connections, I think, are also really important to look back on. Like, who have you met this year? And what impact has that had on you? What impact have you had on them? Like, that's good success as well. So just have a think back about those as well. Yeah. And that, again isn't data it isn't numbers is it necessarily because you know you could be one person yeah one person can have like this profound effect on you and they may have just said one thing like I have to you Mm, yeah (laughs) profound effect yes (laughs) so that's more of a I guess a fluffy drucking but it can be quite significant and it can open doors to you potentially in the future so it's not to be you know, making connections and spending time making connections is a good thing in business. It's not a negative. 100%. And I think the final thing on this kind of list of things to look at for your business success, and we are guilty of not doing this enough, is to go and look back at all of those lovely things that people have said about you. Go and look back at your reviews, your testimonials, go and read your case studies, like all the comments that people have said about great content that you've done, all of that sort of stuff. Like, if people are taking the time to to actually give you that praise, that recognition, that's big. And like, we yeah. definitely don't do that enough. Like we've got a whole folder full of stuff we should be looking at. I was going to say this task as well should not be difficult. What we're not telling no. you to do is go back and look at every single piece of content and see what comments, because what you should be doing as you go through the year is collecting that social proof mm-hmm. and collecting those testimonials, those comments and putting them all somewhere, which yeah. we have. And obviously yeah. we're not very good at then going looking at them. This isn't a massive task if you're collecting them as you go. And same for like analytics, you know, like when I had good success with clients, I would take a screenshot of a, you know, whatever that may be, and make sure I've saved that somewhere so you don't have to go and find it later. But yeah, definitely looking back on that. We did that recently when we went through the, and obviously many of you will know, we've completely overhauled our the Social Media Manager's Toolkit and we've pulled a lot of things together into that toolkit now. And so we had a new sales page created and as part of that process, we were having to find any comments and testimonials. And 
like reading them they you forget don't you like you read them and Mm. they will someone will say you know this has changed my life and you're like oh my god it really like hits home and and some of them we've read multiple times and when you're having those little wobbles you're having those wobbles and you're like am I actually that good or is this really that good and then you read them and you're like no I was right I I do know what I'm talking about or this is as good as I think it is and you just those little aha moments in your brain from somebody else like kind of tooting your horn I think yeah it's really impactful yeah a hundred percent definitely do that definitely all the time every month not not just at the end of the year (laughs) yeah note to self (laughs) okay so you will have defined your definition of success you would have looked back through all of your business related successes and then the final thing is to look at your personal successes and again this is going to be different for everybody it might be that you have had an amazing holiday it might be that you've been on every single school run you've you know you're going to go to the the kids nativity all of those sorts of things so and it might be that you don't remember those so go and grab your diary go and open your google calendar wherever it is that you put all these things down and just look through all the things that you've done, all the places you've been, all the meetings you've had, all of that stuff and just remind yourself, oh yeah, I remember I went to the farm with the kids that day. That was great. You know, it's just reminding yourself of all of those things. And sometimes they might not even be in the diary though, but if you just look at, if you think of your Your inner circle. Your photos uh, albums and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if you've got elderly parents and you've had to care, you're caring more for them and you're having to visit them more. And so it's not really an event, but Mm. maybe every morning you have to nip and see somebody or you have to go and buy somebody some shopping. And, you know, it's all those kind of things. If you've been able to do that, and quite frankly, we're in a really fortunate position that we are able to do that as freelancers and can that's a whole reason lots of us are freelance and we can be flexible to work around not just our immediate family, but extended family Mm. and friends, et cetera. So I think sometimes you just have to take stock of actually, you know what, because you were freelance, you were able to go meet your friend for a coffee who was going through something really tricky. And that's success, isn't it? In itself without all of those numbers. Yeah. So just have a think about those kind of things. And again, is that maybe that has had an impact elsewhere in your business, but maybe by l- having reviewed that, it start things start to make sense and it starts, you know what? That's maybe why I have my audience hasn't grown much because actually I've been spending a lot of time with an elderly relative or and that's all okay, you know, you've got to think of the long term of this, but your relatives or whoever are going to be way more grateful than Instagram is grateful that you've grown your following by 50 people or what have it, you know, so just keep that at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, definitely. And this is like, like we, we should always be making time throughout the year, but especially at the end of the year to kind of look back and just reflect on what's actually happened instead of just telling yourself stories about th- that things haven't been as good as you wanted them to be. So like make time to do that. And make time to share that and share it with people. Okay, Laura, let's do it. Okay. What have we done over the last 12 months? This is so like us not being good at taking our own advice. (laughs) Okay, I'll go first. Right, we've but we built a whole new website at the beginning of this year. So we've changed all of that. Like that, I think, is amazing. Well, I think a lot of that is credit to you. I just read things. (laughs) (laughs) I've read things and still probably miss typos, to be fair. (laughs) So if you see if you see the typos on the website, that's my fault, not Laura's. <laughs> okay, well, this is probably more at the forefront of my mind, but the toolkit overhaul we've given it this year was quite monumental. For those of you yeah. who've been around um, with us for the start, the toolkit was our first ever first ever product, and it mm. is you know I think I said on an Instagram story the other day that it is like our baby our baby yeah. product has become like a teenager. Yeah, Which I'm saying it's oh, a good God. thing. I'd rather they were like a proper adult than an actual teenager. I've already got one of them. Oh yeah, no, but it's good. It's you know. Oh okay, they're a good teenager. They're like going yeah, to go to Oxford day. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Not going to go and get someone pregnant. I, I hope not because it's a digital product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that has been quite a big, and it was a massive decision. It was a massive decision for us. We yeah. had we had three great products. Well, we had way more than that, to be honest, but the Mm. signature products. And we've basically put them all in one and added in a hell of a lot of other stuff as well, Mm. all into one. And that's, to a degree, it's a risk. (laughs) Yeah. But it's gone really well. We're really proud of it. 
before we kind of went out to the world, we were like, yes, this is the best thing we could have ever done. Yeah. And and so far, so so good. We've only had positive comments and, you know, people are buying it. So that's it means I end the year happy. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to tell you what I think is a win that other people might not think is a win. And that is, so throughout the year, we've been asked to speak at various different events and Laura and I do not want to do that. So I think a win for us and like a success for us is that we've actually been brave enough to say no. And we've said no to everyone who's asked us. Yeah. And I think looking back, I think like just because in the past we would have been yes people, we would have been like, say yes, and then we've got to try and get out of it. Whereas (laughs) now we're like, no, we're going to say no. And then it's like done. No, yeah. we're not doing it. It's not been easy because there's lots of people who will say, oh, you've got a speaker at events if you want to be considered good. And it's just like, and we'd be like, oh, God. And then yeah. someone would ask and we'd be like, well, I just don't want to do this. I don't yeah. want to do this. And we'd both kind of, and sometimes one of us would go, maybe we let's should. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we should. It would be good for us if we did. And then we'd be like, let's just sleep on it for 24 hours, which is very much not like us. Laura and I are very, very reactive people so this is something that has been very difficult for us so we have to go away we have to think about it and then we go back and we say no and we've said no every time and it's hard because sometimes you then do see people speaking at events and you're like god they they don't know what they're talking about yeah (laughs) and I think because people see the people who are speaking at events but they don't see the people who were asked and said no do you know what I mean so they think that the people who are actually on that stage are amazing and they probably are but they don't see the people who said no and give them the same credit do you know what yeah. i mean do you know what i'm trying to say you're trying so to do you want some credit laura yes i want, do you want some me credit. to give you a pat on the back tell me we're amazing and i'll be happy <laughs> we'll just stick to the podcast so we can wear a hoodie i can sit and drink coffee you can drink yeah, your drink don't have to like sort your face out it's great yeah we no one's listening in our eyes we're just recording this forgetting that we have people listening <laughs> Way but on that note, that's another win. I, I think guess, the podcast is a big win for us. So thanks to you guys, we've had numerous episodes that have been like in the the number one slot in the podcast charts. I think that's a a good win. Yeah, and most imp- I think what's more, the charts are obviously are nice, and that's kind of like an ego stroke. But what has I'd say is more of a win is now we're seeing lots of people coming to us, are coming into our world, they're buying things, they're saying to us. I love the podcast. The podcast is what I, how I found you or how I got to know you. And that they, people send us lovely messages. So mm. thank you to all of those messages. But also, if you could put it on a review as well, that will help with the charts. Yeah, and also, if you haven't already sent us one, you know where to send it. <laughs> yes, please do. Send, a, send us a nice little message that we'd all, we always love it. Definitely, definitely. Got any more? I also think the wins in that we get sent to us from our members. I can't get my words out. I think we should take some, not credit for that, because that is obviously their hard work that has led to that win. But especially in the inner hub, we've got so many resources and that we and training and people go and they implement it and then they come back and they say, Laura, you did this. I implemented it. This has resulted in this. And that is amazing. Mm, that, yeah. like... And that happens a lot. And I don't think we give ourselves enough credit for that. Like we were, we were always really happy for that person. We were like, oh my God, that's amazing. And, you know, and, but then we don't then come away and go, oh, we, uh, we contributed to that. Yeah. Like we're, yeah. So sh- we're so, so shit at that. We are bad at that. That is true. That is very true. I also loved this year meeting so many of our members and so many other social media managers at Tomicon. And for me, that's a win because I'm not a people person. I don't very often go anywhere. So being surrounded by loads of people does kind of like make me really nervous. Um, But I enjoyed that. I even hugged some people, which is very unlike me. I know. God, imagine what 2024 is going to bring. Oh, God. I don't want to know what comes after hugs. (laughs) <laughs> well, on, but on that on that note, in terms of taking ourselves off and um, removing ourselves from our office, which to be fair we don't do very often, we did also take ourselves on two business retreats last year. Which it's you know whatever that may be, whether your retreat is just taking yourself out and having a day at a 
coffee shop or a local little spa and removing yourself and being able to spend time thinking and doing whatever you want to do on that retreat or whether it's like going away and going abroad or whether it's going on your own or going with another group of people whatever that may be it's always good to have that time to reflect and to learn yeah like we went to Newmarket and we went to Santorini like the two places couldn't be more opposite (laughs) But they were both brilliant for our brains and our businesses. So yeah. I think, yeah, that's definitely a win. And obviously the feta cheese really helped. Oh, my God. So I'm taking cheese. that as a win as well. Yeah. I could do with some Let's of that now. Let's go back for the feta. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. People have probably heard me say a hundred times on the podcast. Anyway, the fact that I've been able to go to all of William's appointments, well, all the ones that I wanted to go to, and I'm going to be able to go to his doing a Christmas pantomime. I'm going to go to that. And I'm going to be able to go to obviously his operation and have time out when he's in having his surgery. That for me is success. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And for me, I have been to every single school pickup unless I've been like Santorini, yeah. <laughs> every where I've been in the country, <laughs> I've done the school pickups, school drop offs, and actually, just as I'm kind of we're talking about this, this is the last year that my youngest child leaves his first call the end of this year so I'll have been going there for nine years and all in that time I've been self-employed and so this will be the last year of doing the school plays he doesn't do nativities now he's in this year but all of those things I've done them all I've never missed anything the Mother's Day performances the nativities the come and look at their books well the open classrooms the parents evenings I've done all of that for nine years and I will be giving myself a massive pat on the back come July because it hasn't always been easy and mm. it's quite difficult to work between nine and three actually when you get your yeah. teeth stuck in normally like me I get real stuck into something at about 2 30 so I think but the fact that this year I have done the school drop-offs the pickups the plays the clubs you know I'm forever driving around taking my kids places and and I've been able to do that we we, we won't talk about all the times when we've been on a zoom and you've suddenly gone oh my god I've got to do the school run we won't (laughs) talk about those on a public podcast I have to say though just to be you know keeping it real you know we like to (laughs) not just be making out that life is easy I did forget a child this year it's the first time ever first time ever I just told him I got stuck in traffic Yeah, he was fine. He was just like, you know, it's like that walk of shame though, isn't it? We have to walk into yeah. the school and go, oh, I'm really sorry. And I just lied and said that I got stuck in traffic, which is all for really bad as well, isn't it? And then Albert will often go, oh, well, when you next forget me, I forget this, forget this. <laughs> Obviously I did. I hope he doesn't What does he want to, to happen this. next time you forget him? Well, I can't, I don't actually know because I never let him finish the sentence, but <laughs> yeah, bless him. He yeah, had to sit there. It. I'll never forget it. He sat on that little chair. So I walked oh, the door. Oh, little Albert. Let's get him to phone Childline next time. Oh, go on. 0800 1111. Why do you know that? I don't know. <laughs> and I haven't had for actually phoned it. <laughs> don't worry. Before you like start worrying that, that my parents were some sort of monsters. I just know it. I think I used to threaten them with it. <laughs> <laughs> God. Jesus. That's one to prepare myself for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think we've got one more as well, which I think this will probably resonate with a lot of people, is being able to deal with and have time off over the summer holidays yes and all the school holidays yeah yeah we are it's not easy so hats off to anybody who's been able to do that by choice yeah because some people might not want to and that's fine no Uh, but it does feel like there's just they're out of school more than they're in school so i think just the fact that we are able to manage that and deal with a school holiday every well it feels like every fortnight it it does to all the parents it doesn't help that, and this is obviously very personal to you and I, but it doesn't help that half the time our bloody school holidays don't clash. Yeah. So like the one week holiday in October is actually impacts us for two weeks because they're not the same. Yeah. Which annoying. there are benefits to that. But yeah, so yeah. well done us. Yeah, well done us and well done you for everything that you've done this year. Um, I would say though. I thought you were talking to me then. I was like, wow, that's nice. no. No, our, our listeners. <laughs> Sorry, well done go on, them. carry on. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, as important it is to, for us to always look back, I think we, that's really important. We should always be reflecting on what we've done. It's just as important to look forwards. And so as we go into this new year, you're going to want to start kind of setting your goals, making plans for what you're going to do in 2024 in both your business and your personal life. 
And so to help you to do that, we've put together a brand new annual planning workbook for 2024, which you can go and grab for free and download at the twolauras.com forward slash free. It's a Google Doc, so you can fill it all in on your computer. You don't need to print anything out. So go and grab that. Again, the link is the twolauras.com forward slash free, F-R-E-E. We'll put that link in the show notes as well. Nice. Okay, so we'll be back same time, same place next week. And we will see you then. So bye. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Bye, bye, bye.